Yo, what's up, guys? I'm back on a video for you. This time we have another tier list. Now, this isn't any old or any tier list. Now, I know as you can see, it's a little bit different for you guys in the background. This is a new template I'm trying out for all my videos instead of the old ones I have. So it's going to be a lot longer to do them than this. So I'm going to try them out. Let me know if you do enjoy them. Obviously, they might look a little bit cleaner overall as well. Thanks to GG. Anyway, so this video is going to be a little bit of a different one. It is not going to be this traditional best card in each tier. It is going to be what cards I've enjoyed the most. Now, this is a tier compilation of 19, I think it is, uh, of my best cards I've used all year. So, obviously, you might see like a, a 99 nail or below, like this De Bruyne, let's say. And you just won't think it makes sense. But, obviously, it's just what time of year it was, how much I enjoyed the card, for what stage it was. Anyway, starting off, it is De Bruyne. 87 rating, he came out literally within the first two weeks, I think it was. Now, incisive pass was so, so nice back then. Obviously, people are going to be really bad defending. Obviously, got really bad defenders. And have this card with really good passing and incisive pass was really, really amazing at the start of the year. And obviously, he's a city boy for me, so I really did enjoy him as well. For me, he was an A tier card. Obviously, I don't quite think he's S tier. He got outdated quite fast compared to some of the other cards. But that incisive was definitely nice at the start of the year to unlock a lot of cards. Next list is Team the Icon, Philip Lahm. Now, when this card came out, it was around December, January time, which is actually very, very rare. And what I want to do with this kind of video is I want to have a person per position. So I don't want to just have all strikers because that's a little bit boring. So Philip Lahm is my standout right back for the year. Now, reason being for that long ball pass, if you remember how OP that was in the middle of the game, the long ball across the pitch was like the easiest route to go through and got. Obviously, had the intercept, the anticipate as well. Press proven. Really good defensively. Obviously, not the tallest. So, if the aerial meta was a bit stronger then, it might not have been as good. But overall, this car was exceptionally good. Could play CDM as well. For me, I'm going to put him in B tier. Was really good, but not quite as good as some of the other cards on this list. But in terms of how good he was for that long ball pass, it was very, very OP. Now, one of the things to take into note when doing this video, obviously, you had different meta shifts during the year. So, obviously, at the start, you had Travellers, who were stupidly OP. Then, you had the Finesses, which is obviously why you're going to see certain cards for certain times of year in this, and exactly what I'll explain in a minute. But, next is his name on now. 99 rated, Finesse plus, Quick Step plus. He's absolutely insane. 5 star, 5 star, technical. This card is so, so good. Obviously, it's a little bit low on the strength side of things. He's still a little bit weak, but... I am going to put him in, this is going to sound so stupid, and the only time you'll ever hear this, Neymar in detail. Now, only reason being is because it's August, I don't really play the game as much. There's a lot of good cards out, so it doesn't really matter much to me that I've got 99 Neymar in my club. It doesn't really mean too much, but he is one of the best cards I've ever used. He's honestly top two cards I've used this year, but in terms of how much I've used him and how much I'm going to use him, he's just not up there with one of my favourites. Next list is this Alfonso Davies flashback card. Now, when he first came out, a lot of people were touting him to be overpriced, too expensive. But when you actually got to grips with this card and used him, it was actually a really nice card. Obviously, had the rapid, had the quick step to get him full with that 99 pace. I think one of the first 99 pace cards of the year. Obviously, had that intercept, which is full, but it's really nice as well. And had that whip pass plus. Now, in terms of club legends, he wasn't actually one of my best ones. Obviously, I did enjoy him for quite a few games. I think like 300 4 draw. I wouldn't class him as one of the up there cards. He's still a very good card. I should go put him C tier. But in terms of the club legends that I've got on this list, he's not as good as some of the other. But I did still quite enjoy him. Next up is one of the kings himself. It's R9. Now, I did this SBC when he first came out. And I was thinking, considering team seasons around the corner, it's a little bit of a waste. Boy, was I wrong. This card, before team of the year, was carrying me. During Team of the Year was carrying me. And after I kind of started to get like a few better cards in him. And I was thinking mm, maybe he's going to get a little bit outdated. But boy was I wrong. Even when I brought him off the bench this guy would manage to score a hat trick. It doesn't matter if he's got one playstyle plus. And obviously four normal playstyles including the playstyle plus that is. Uh, but Finesse, Technical and Quick Step are three of the best ones for an attacker. Five star, five star. He is so good. I still have him in this club to this day. Because I have him as a club legend for me. He's one of the top four for me. And that's why he's going to go in S tier. There's not really too much to say about R9. He's got a massive aura about him. Even if he's not actually that good in game, he's got a bit of jam and a bit of aura that can get him from goal, even if you haven't got the ability to beat these 99 rated defenders or something like that. Next up is Nathan Ake. Now, I used him on my City Past and Present on my second account, and generally, I've got all sorts of cards on that team. But this is top three, if not top two, of my favourite cards on the whole team. I play him left back just like we do with City. He's got a lot of good characteristics and play styles, which means he's really good there. Like the technical, like the ping, like the air will stop the um, hard and stuff like that ish. Uh, got the long ball as well. Obviously, Jockey Plus and Anticipate Plus are perfect for fullback as well. This card is one of my favourite left backs in the game this year. I end up putting him in A tier. If I did use him for longer, um, I probably would have him more as an S tier. But. 
because in the time span I had him in, he was still a very good card, it's just not quite a club legend. Next up is Rolfo. Now, when I first got this card, I was so, so happy. Because a lot of people decided not to do it for some reason, even though she pretty much got max upgrade before the card even expired. Anyway, 4-star skills, 5-star weaver is really nice. Ping Pass Plus was amazing at the time. Technical, first touch as well. Now, there's a few things why this card's where she is. On stats, she was literally the best midfielder in the game. Look at that. She was like a Holy Club's card a couple months ago, which is just ridiculous. And obviously nearly a 9 golden club card as well. Anyway, the only thing I didn't really like about it is the fact that she had a second playstyle of Trickster and obviously no defensive playstyles, which actually made her not that good of a left back or sometimes a midfielder. So that's why I ended up put in C tier for me. She was still a good card, don't get me wrong, and obviously an amazing card for stats. That ping pass was nice, but I think she got quite outdated quite fast because of what cards came out with them, what playstyle cards and etc. stuff like that. Next up is the 91 play on the salad. Now, this card was very good for you two uh, methods, which I'll explain in a minute. But one thing I do want to go through first is that three-star weevil was the downfall of this card, in my opinion. There's a few things that were missing, but that was the main one. Now, what I will say is, though, this card had two perfect playstyles. Finesse Plus was absolutely amazing, if you remember how good it was. And obviously, Travella. So, he survived the Travella meta when they got nerfed that, and obviously, the Finesse as well. He was incredible for such a long period of time, and that is why he's going to be a B tier for me. Overall, he's very, very good, but the 4-star, 3-star definitely ruined the card. If he was 5-star, five 5-star, five I probably would have used him for another month or two more. But with that being said, the actual card itself with those two playstyles um, play and playstyle pluses, it was absolutely just exceptionally good. If you green as well, this card was stupid. Next up, we have Yaya Torre. Now, 4-star skills, 4-star, we thought it was a good start for midfielder. Obviously, had the press premium plus, which is a very nice upgrade, because he had no playstyle plus on his base hero card. Obviously, had incisive and finesse, like that. but overall, he was a good card game for me. Obviously, that's why he's on the list. Like, no card in here is not a uh, club, not a club legend, but a club hero for me. But there's a certain few which are a lot better than others. But unfortunately for me, Yaya is a D tier. He was a good card, don't get me wrong, for quite a while, but not quite to the other level of some of the other cards on the list. Next up is, if not the, or one of the top two influential cards in my club. Obviously, I got him on the day of release, I think it was. This 93 play of the month, I was very angry that I didn't get the 92 version. But when he got this, I was so, so happy. Obviously, the Rapid Plus was absolutely insane. This card was untouchable back then. Because of what stage of the year it was, there were so little cards that could compete with it. The attack, obviously, the defenders couldn't compete. It was so stupid good. I think I've got about 900 games on my one and about 1,200 contributions. Honestly, one of the favourite cards of all the year. Obviously, really tall. Got the quick step as well. Got the Travello and That was really good. Overall, it got a little bit outdated because of the lack of playstyles. And obviously, this year was very, very based on playstyles. Obviously, in ST, I don't think I need to say that. He is top two favourite cards this year. I'm not going to say who the top one is because she is very last. But overall, this Mbappe has my heart as the top games played club legend for me. Next up is this 96 Zinedine Zidane. Now, I managed to get it out of an icon pick, I think it was. That was quite a long time ago when they were actually quite rare to pack these kind of cards. And he was so, so good. Two perfect playstyle pluses for a midfielder. Obviously, the long ball as well. Switch it for Ness, Travella, Technical. This card had it all. He had so much aura in my midfield. And honestly, I didn't even want to replace him during team of the season. And a little bit after that, he was that good. But unfortunately, he did fall a little bit behind the meta with that defending, with that pace. But overall, he's an A-tier card for me. Just misses out on the S-tier. He was a very, very good card for a long time. But unfortunately, there was a card that I felt was a little bit better than him for a bit of a longer period of time that was coming up on that a S Oh, that S tier, sorry. Next up was this UCL Vincent Company. Now, I actually used this card for, I think it was 500 games in total. I think he was my best sense back of the year in terms of longevity and how good I used him. But, plays dealt wise, had the main one as Anticipate Plus, which was literally perfect. It's the main defending, especially sense back, plays that plus you want. Obviously, didn't really have the intercept or passing playstyle to go with it, but did have aerial, did have power header, so could win stuff in the air as well. For me, company is a C take on. Unfortunately, I don't quite think he's up to the level of some of the others on this list in terms of how much of a club legend he was. But in terms of sense back wise, he honestly was my favourite of the year. 
Next was 98 Ronaldinho. Now, similar situation to the Neymar card, unfortunately. At the time of year I got him, I couldn't really enjoy him to his full potential. But when I've been using him right now, he is absolutely incredible. Same with Neymar with the finesse and the quick step. Absolutely insane. Unfortunately, got dead ball and tricks, which, in my opinion, does a little bit ruin the card. But stats-wise, dribbling, passing, this card just had it all. He is so, so good. And honestly, I played one foot champs in the last month and a half, and it was with this card. So, so good. Unfortunately for me, still going to be a D tier. Purely because of the longevity of the card and how long I've had it. But I would say this is top three cards I've used this year. Next up is King Kai Havertz. Now, obviously, that is based on FIFA only. I would never say stuff like that in real life because obviously at Arsenal, I don't really like them. But with that being said, this Kai Havertz card during team of the season, finesse, ping, technical, Aerial as well in this card, so we can play full back to defend the Haaland, stuff like that. Got the long ball as well, got the first touch. This card was perfect. Honestly, medium, medium, four star, five star. This card, you can play a left back, striker, CDM, goalkeeper. It didn't really matter. This card has it all. He can literally be so versatile, and he was one of the best cards I've used this year. Top three, in my opinion. I would say it goes blank, I'm not going to say a name yet, Mbappe, then Havertz, and then R9. But overall, S tier, I don't even think I need to say that because obviously I've just put him second best. But this card overall was stupidly good. I honestly had so much fun with him. He could pretty much do anything you wanted to, and he was so, so diverse. Next up is Colin Warney. Now, when I first got this card, I was a little bit under a bit of confusion because obviously he's got the finesse plus he's got the quick step, which is both very, very good. And I was thinking he's only got the four star skills. And the stage of year it was, I was a little bit disappointed because the mate your mark cards pretty much all have five star skills. But when I use this card, wow. The technical, the press proven, the aerial, the ping pass, that quick step and uh, finesse combo was one of the best I've used all year. The five star weak foot was literally so, so deadly on the finesses with that. Obviously, I think it was 99 finishing overall. Yeah, it was. I can see it there. But one thing major I actually did really enjoy about this card is the fact that he had anticipate. He could definitely win it up high up the pitch, and he did that quite a few times, which would steal it from my um, opponents, kind of mess around with it at the back. So that is why I actually really did enjoy this card. That's why it's going to be a B tier for me. Obviously, could have been better with the four-star skills that make your mark kind of time in FIFA, which is a little bit later on. But with that being said, those finesses were hard to ignore, and that's why he's going to be there. Now, next up is Erling Haaland. Now, when I was talking about the meta switching from Travella to Finesse to Aerial, this was the card, in my opinion, that changed all. Obviously, I had the Van Dykes and a lot of the defenders. But for me, this is card changed all. Now, I was actually using him from very, very early. I'm not saying that I was part of the meta switch and why it was actually so toxic in the end. But the Aerial plus meta for me was really good with this card. I had this card about four times, buying back and selling him. Because he was so, so good in the end, so dominant. Didn't really have that many playstyles, and obviously had a three-star weak foot as well. But how dominant he was, how fast he was on that sprint speed, how strong he was on that left foot. This card was so, so good. That's why I'm going to put him at A tier, personally. But the aerial meta definitely switched around this time that Harlan came out. Obviously, it got introduced more and more when they had more and more aerial plus cards. But when he came out, there was not really that many that compete with him. From one big man to another, this is Drogba. Now, this, in my opinion, is the best big man in the game. I know you've got the team near Haaland and you've got the 9 Haaland now. But the only card that could really come close is that 9 Haaland because he's got that finesse plus. But this card, Tiki Tack is perfect for a big man striker. Aerial plus, power shot, rapid. That rapid, he feels like he's got 200 pace. I don't know what it is. He's so stupidly fast. He's obviously got press proven as well. Got relentless swing run all game. This card is in my opinion, the best big man. But obviously, same situation as Dino and Neymar. It was too late in the year for me to actually enjoy him to his full potential. Still, I am going to put him beat it because he is that good. I, I've only used him for about three weeks, but I just know how good the card is, where he's probably one of the most broken cards this year. But unfortunately, like I said, haven't used him enough to put him any higher than that to make him a club legend. Next up is Manu Akanji. Now, when this card came out, I instantly did him. It was obviously against our showdown v Liverpool. Now, this wasn't actually the card I have. I think I did this card, and then I obviously got the plus one for the draw against Liverpool, and then also got another plus one on the showdown winner's boost, which was really nice. Has the anticipate, has the intercept plus, has obviously the pink and the long ball, which is perfect for centre-back. Jockey, aerial. I had a really, really good time with that. Now, I think I said I had the best time with Company as a sense back, but I completely forgot this card. So, that is, I think he's going to be above Company. That's why I'm going to put him in 80 instead of Company C. I think this was my best sense back of the year overall. I know I've just said that about Company, but I completely forgot I can use him in this list. He, honestly, I think I used him for about 600 games. So, so good, and not really many sense backs could get over him at the time. 
Last but very not least is Aitana Bonmati. Now, when I tell you this card carried me for a good four to five months of FIFA, if not even longer than that, I am not lying. That four star skills five star weave was perfect with midfielder. She had 92 finishing or stuff like that. She had really low shot power, but it didn't matter at all. At that stage, the keepers weren't that good. Her shots were just going past all of them. Technical plus was absolutely amazing back then, especially for someone of her height. Got the ping, got the ticky tacky, got the incisive, the finesse, the First touch, got the relentless, all perfect playstyles. This card, I have nothing but good words to say about her. Obviously, she had their 90 inceptions, no defensive playstyles, but at that time of the year, I didn't care. She was going forward and scoring a hat trick every single game for me. It was so, so stupid how she would outscore all of my attackers and obviously just be a boss midfielder as well. Overall, it is my number one card this year. She's obviously Esther. She is the best I've used this year and she will be. Considering they only just added women this year, I didn't expect to enjoy a woman as my top one card in the game. But she was just unreal and I'm so glad I had her throughout the year. But that's all with my tier list. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Obviously, this is a little bit of a different one. It's a little bit weird with the structure. Obviously, you've got Neymar at the right of the part, which doesn't really make sense because Sydney's one of the best cards in the game. But I hope you kind of understood what I was trying to go with in terms of Club Legends and how much I enjoyed the card compared to what time of the year it was. But if you did enjoy this kind of video, please do subscribe. It generally does mean a lot to my channel. And I'll see you after for the next video.